Hey everyone, and welcome to Google Academy. I'm really excited about being here today as part of Google's Think Retail event. It's here that we plan to bring you the latest tips for growing online sales for this upcoming holiday season. For those of you who know me, it's nice to see you again. And for those of you that are new to the Google Academy, welcome. My name is Jeff Kirschenman, and I'm thrilled to be a part of these Academy series. So you know, I'm not delivering this academy alone. In fact, I have some incredible talent supporting me and supporting you. During today, we will be joined by two very fluent Google product experts, Vanessa Messenger and Ted Gola, both of which you'll meet shortly. Uh, before we kick off and get started, I wanted to make sure that you are in the right place. The reason is, is that we have a few other Think Retail sessions kicking off right now, and there could easily be some confusion. So for those of you who haven't joined us before for the Google Academy, today's content is intended for Google Ad users with a minimum of one year of experience. Today, we will cover all of the different Google products and strategies for growing online sales at a high level. Now, if by chance you're looking for product specific deep dives and want to learn even more, we recommend you check out the advanced sessions on the Think Retail homepage. Again, that is the Think Retail homepage. As a heads up to provide you with even more educational opportunity, Directly following this session will be another Google Academy training that will focus on growing in-store sales. So if you have storefronts and want to get more customers into them this holiday season, then this Academy is for you. And we look forward to seeing you there after this event. All right, so with that, let's kick things off with a few quick housekeeping items to make sure that we're all on the same page. First and foremost, questions in this format are welcome. So if you have a question, don't hesitate. Please type your questions in the box below. And we've actually got a team of product specialists who are ready to answer in the background. With yours and other questions coming in, just please be patient with us. Our goal is to get you the best answer and to get it to you as quickly as possible as well. Typically, many of you want to know if the slides will be available afterwards. And unfortunately, we cannot share the slides, but what is available is this video. It'll be available for you on demand where you can review at your leisure. And in addition, we actually highly recommend that you check out the resources tab at the top of this page. There's a workbook there, as well as a few other resources that we think you'll find helpful heading into the holiday season. I'd also encourage you to have something for notes for capturing insights, takeaways, ideas, questions, and even action items. Lastly, we really appreciate your feedback. So please take the time to submit the feedback form at the conclusion of today's session. It means a lot to us and a few lucky winners will get a Google Nest Hub. It could be you. I want to introduce the Google Ads Growth Formula especially for anyone who is possibly unfamiliar with it. This is a four-step formula designed to help advertisers achieve maximum growth within Google Ads. The formula is benefit-driven, aligned to advertiser maturity and modular. Really what that means is that it can be used for brands and agencies and clients of any size. So no matter your size and or how long you've been in the game, this formula or framework should be relevant. In today's session, we're going to use the formula as our framework for holiday best practices so that your business can reach maximum growth this holiday season. Moving forward, let's take a look at today's agenda. In today's session, we will first take a look at what we learned from last year's unique holiday season and what you should expect this year. Then we'll kick off our four step growth formula by discussing how to set objectives, including how to use trends and tools to inform your strategy and how to plan your investment. Next, we'll learn how to get ready with measurement, a value based bidding strategy and strong creative. After that, we'll learn strategies for how to capture and generate demand. Finally, last but not least, we'll learn how to evaluate and expand your campaigns which is a really crucial step for you to make so you can make the most out of this opportunity of the upcoming holiday season. With that, let's kick things off by taking a step back and looking at last year's incredibly unique holiday season. 
Starting off, the 2020 shopping season was the biggest ever for digital spending with $1.1 trillion in global sales. 45% of all digital holiday spend happened by the end of Cyber Week. As you can see from the stats, we saw tremendous growth during last year's holiday season. Shopping started earlier with the period before Cyber Week seeing the greatest year on year revenue growth. E-commerce also paved the way with 50% more digital revenue worldwide in November and December compared to the previous year. Earlier in the keynote, we heard from Matt and Suchi from the Boston Consulting Group. And during this keynote, they shared their insights based on Google data and research from the BCG of really what to expect this coming holiday season. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, it's all located on demand on the Think Retail homepage if you didn't get a chance to join us. However, based on that conversation, here's what they said to expect. During the pandemic, there was a dramatic shift towards e-commerce. The research indicated last year's shift to digital happened quickly and went on to show that it has since stabilized at an elevated level. So it's likely that e-commerce will not continue to accelerate at the same rate that it did in 2020. But there's still a ton of opportunity this season when it comes to holiday shopping, as many behaviors have shifted forever and more eyeballs are online. They went on to share that the new digital first behaviors learned in 2020 will continue this year. As we looked at search interest for near me and online globally, it is clear that online and offline retail behaviors have converged and omnichannel has become the new normal. Categories, they continue to shift, so it's important to keep an eye on the latest trends and insights to inform your strategy. Performance Planner is a great way to forecast campaigns and plan budgets, especially during seasonal moments when it's harder to really predict allocation. Lastly, leaning into automation will allow you to be flexible at any moment and successfully navigate this upcoming holiday season ahead. All these insights will influence the way you can and should prepare for an even more successful holiday season. I guess in recap, while it might be tough to beat 2020's e-commerce gains with best practices in place, your business can unlock this season's full potential. And as always, here at Google, we're looking forward to helping you achieve your goals. With that, now let's take a look at our first step in the growth formula, setting objectives. We'll also cover how to set investment. In this step, it's critical to identify what you want to achieve this holiday season and make sure all of your objectives and KPIs are working together to achieve that specific goal. A lot of planning and conversations should go into this first step. As shown here on the slide, you should be taking a look at current trends, setting measurable and time-bound goals, aligning your business, marketing, media, and campaign KPIs, and then planning your investment. Now, we know that it's almost September, and so in terms of your holiday planning, this step has likely already happened. However, it's always good to review your goals and make sure they're following best practices, which is why it's still really important for us to cover this today. 2021 is a unique year, so you may have business goals that are different for this holiday season. For example, you may want to increase volume and make up for lower demand from the first half of the year. This may mean adding more flash sales on your site or increasing marketing efficiency goals. You may also want to increase profit and return on your investment. I guess the point here is that, as we mentioned earlier, e-commerce skyrocketed in 2020 and holiday behaviors changed forever. That being said, just be mindful of using 2020 as your baseline for this year's holidays goals. For best practices, we recommend that you also take a look at 2019 results as you evaluate and set targets for your business. All right, on this next slide, don't let it scare you. It's got a lot of value. And what we are saying here is that as you develop your holiday strategy and your goals, it's really critical to take a look at the latest trends. The fact is, is that we've heard from retailers that many are not really sure how to go about finding and analyzing these trends. 
The good news is that this slide here highlights the tools that can really help. The first one listed here is the Rising Retail Categories Tools. Uh, this tool gives you insight into the fastest growing product related search categories in Google Search, along with the locations where they are growing and the search queries associated with them. Pretty cool. From these insights, you can gain new product and merchandising ideas, adjust your website and landing page content to align with products and categories that are growing, and allocate your budget to capture changing category demands. The next tool available for additional support is the Shopping Insights Report, which gives you further insight into the specific products and brands that are popular or trending down. Updated daily, this report gives you shopping trends through daily search data of more than 55,000 products, 45,000 brands, and nearly 5,000 categories. Wow. With the Shopping Insights Report, you can see how products and brand popularity varies across all 210 designated market areas in the U.S. and see the share of mobile and desktop search to plan your strategy for each screen. This can help you to really review your product mix to ensure it's competitive for your categories and adjust your promotion strategy to align with very popular products. Pretty cool. And making this tool even cooler with an additional pro tip we offer here. If you'd like, you can set it up so that you can get personalized reports via email with weekly and monthly trends for categories and products relevant to your business. Check it out. There's even more with the Merchant Center Best Seller Report. This tool goes one level deeper by showing you what products are best sellers in which you carry in your feed. This gives you valuable direction to decide which products you should add to your current merchandise and strategy. It also helps you adjust your budget and bids to get the full value of top selling products. To get started, navigate to the Growth tab in Merchant Center, and here you'll find the Best Sellers Report. In each report, you can filter the information by country and Google product category. For years, one of the top requests we've received from merchants is how to better understand their performance by category holistically across search and shopping. Well, check it out. The Retail Categories Report does just that. It shows your performance for search and shopping across various categories, allowing you to see where there is room for optimization further and where you can gain more click share, which translates to mind share over the holidays. Later this year, we also plan to launch auction insights for categories across search and shopping, which will allow you to see how you're faring from a competitive standpoint and where you can be even more aggressive. Like I said, some are pretty amazing tools to gather trend insights. Now that you know what trends to look at, how should you form your goals for this season? Well, first thing to do is to make sure that the objective is measurable. This will let you easily check on progress and evaluate success. Make sure to include both the absolute number and the percentage change over time. Secondly, set a time frame for the objectives. Like when do you want to see the results? Use this to evaluate success. And to finish off, goals need to be customer centric. In other words, it is not about trailing indicators, which for example might be more sales, which are actually business centric, but the leading indicators, for example, increased engagement along the buying journey, which are customer centric. Kind of an easy way to make sure that you're following this rule is to ask yourself, can you tie your goals back to your customer's purchasing journey? Now that you've thought through your goals, it's critical to align them. The way we do that is laid out on this slide. Let me walk you through it. On the left side of the slide, you can see the level of the objectives. The higher levels being the business objectives and the more detailed or lower objectives being the campaign. First up, starting from the top, we have the business objectives, which is the highest level. For this goal, we recommend working with the CEO. I'm sure you know this, but your business objectives usually fall into three main categories increasing market share, increasing revenue, or increasing profit. 
In this example on the right here, highlighted in green because it's a customer centric goal, we will aim for increasing revenue from online channel sales and affiliates. Next you'll see highlighted in yellow are the measurable goals. Here it's 25% or a 10 to $12 million year over year increase. Then lastly, listed in gray is the time bound element of the goal, fourth quarter. Now it's time to make sure your marketing campaign and media objectives are all working toward that same higher level goal. So moving down, next we have the marketing objective. The marketing objective is how the CEO's business objective is being achieved. It's usually set by the CMO and really can be anything from generating leads to growing offline sales. Again, you will see the same color coded goals, customer centric, time bound and measurable in their respective colors. Our marketing objective in this case is to increase sales on the direct to consumer website from new and existing customers, followed there by our measurable and time bound goals. Moving even lower, things get more detailed with your media objectives. Media objectives help you meet the marketing objective, which in this case is growing online sales. They're usually set by the digital marketing team. You can have both performance and brand media objectives. In this example, our performance objective is to drive 7,000 purchases from customers through Google in Q4. And on the brand side, reach 2 million viewers on YouTube. Last but not least is your campaign objective. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road. Campaign objectives are the KPIs used to gauge the success of a specific marketing campaign. We recommend you keep a close eye on return on ad spend. Bringing this back to our example, our campaign objectives include driving 4,000 sales from customers using Google Shopping with a target return on ad spend of 350%. Also, we're hoping to see a 15% brand lift from viewers on YouTube. Now, I know we covered a lot here, but I can't stress enough how important it is to work across your business to ensure that all of these goals are aligned for ultimate success. I know which is even easier to determine what it is in this type of a format, which is one worth considering. If you got the time, steal that thing, all right? So now that we have our goals in place, it's important to think about how your business will allocate budget during the holidays. This slide highlights three tips. When looking at your account for some added perspective, you can see how you performed at this time last year. And you can also see how this performance compared to your competitors. Both great ways to generate some insights into what you did well and what could be done even better. Another tip is that throughout this season, you should also monitor optimization score to ensure your bids and budgets are optimized. We will dive into Performance Planner and optimization uh, a bit later today, but these are two great ways to ensure that you're accurately planning your investment and ensuring your account is following best practices. Some more tips here. Demand will likely increase for your products, so we want to leave budget headroom while your goals are also being met. We can also ensure that your budget is effectively allocated towards your top performing campaigns by using shared budgets. And then lastly, we recommend downloading the Google Ads mobile app to monitor your campaigns in real time during the most important days. I mentioned Performance Planner earlier, and here it is as promised. Performance Planner is a Google Ads tool that allows you to forecast the impact of different spend scenarios on key metrics for upcoming periods and identify optimal target bid and budget settings for your always on campaigns. Start here to aggregate forecasts across the account and build plans based on recent trends. I also suggest you use Performance Planner to forecast conversion volumes at different targets. This can help you see the maximum amount of conversions at any target CPA or ROAS 
and grow your sales revenue at stable profit margins. For example, if you want to drive a thousand sales next quarter, Performance Planner can help you determine how much you need to spend at what CPA or ROAS to achieve that goal. One thing to note is that the data used in the Performance Planner, bid and target simulations, and forecasts in the recommendation tab all come from the same source of data in Google Ads, in addition to what is used by Smart Bidding. So this is a great way to understand Smart Bidding potential and get visibility into insights. A couple of cool new tools with the Performance Planner. One is the ability to easily share your ideal plan with a link, and the other is a simulation. The simulation takes historical campaign performance and seasonal trends for your market target markets uh, and region and gives you a simulation of how it could kind of shake out. So play with that. Outside of that, here are three ways to use Performance Planner to capture seasonal demand. One, plan ahead to ensure your investment is sufficient for reaching your seasonal business objectives. Two, plan optimal bid and bid settings regularly throughout peak season. And then three, adjust forecasts to account for expected future performance changes. People often ask, what percent of my budget should I spend on each platform? Well. I wish there was a magic number here, but to tell you the truth, this varies so much account by account. It depends on a ton of different factors like your business goals, your industry, and your competition. I'd suggest you talk to your Google team for more insight on how much of your investment should go to each. Typically, for online sales, we recommend you spend the majority of your budget on search and shopping, which have the biggest impact when potential customers are searching for your products whether they're doing research, comparing prices, um, or ready to buy. Then use discovery and video and local campaigns, if those are applicable, to close the loop with customers and maximize lifetime value. This can vary greatly based on your business goals. Now that we've covered our objectives, let's take a look at the next step in the formula. And for that, I'm gonna pass it over to Vanessa. As a reminder, don't forget, keep your questions coming. Vanessa? Thanks, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa Messenger, and I am a product lead for shopping and automation. I've been at Google for 10 years, and I am so excited to be with you here today to talk about how to grow online sales during this holiday season. With that, let's continue on to step two. Before launching any new campaigns, it's vital to make sure you have a few things in place, including robust measurement, a value-based bidding strategy, strong creative, user experience, and more. To keep things simple, in the Get Ready section, we'll focus on what we call the big three, measurement, automation, and creative. First, let's dive into measurement. Now, when it comes to measurement, we all know that privacy is a key issue for all of you as digital marketers. This holiday season, don't forget to ensure you're following our three best practices for privacy-safe growth. The first is one Google tag, otherwise known as GTAG, which will help us put the correct tagging in place on our website. This is important to make sure that we're tracking conversions in a privacy safe and durable manner. The second is enhanced conversions, a way to invest in additional sources of first party data to provide conversion accuracy. And the third, which we won't discuss in detail today, is called consent mode, which right now is for European countries only, but it focuses on how we respect users' choices by collecting consent as needed. Once we have these three steps in place as a foundation, we can start moving forward and doing more exciting things with our digital strategy, such as implementing attribution models, as well as smart bidding and optimization. In order to measure and value user touch points to truly understand the impact of your investment in Google search, you should also ensure you set up a conversion value. Having the right measurement can help you allocate your budget effectively. We recommend that you dynamically track each transaction's order value by setting up a conversion value to optimize revenue. Now let's dive into automation. 
As we discuss automation and specifically automated bidding strategies, it is important to keep in mind that not every customer brings the same value to your business. Some conversions do not matter as much to your business goals, while others are of a higher value and should be reported and optimized accordingly. When growing online sales, we recommend one of these two smart bidding strategies, maximize conversion value and target ROAS which we call value-based bidding strategies. Maximize conversion value sets bids at auction time to get you as much conversion value as possible within your campaign's budget. Target ROAS sets bids for each auction to maximize revenue, i.e. conversion value, at a ROAS target that you set. Target ROAS is the optimal strategy to maximize conversion value at a given return on ad spend. But generally, if you don't have a specific target, use maximize conversion value. You can find smart bidding recommendations, in this case, target ROAS, in the recommendations page with expected impact uplift. Review your performance metrics and be willing to pivot. For example, significant shifts in conversion rate may require adjustments to your smart bidding targets. We'll talk more about this shortly. We know implementing and monitoring smart bidding can be challenging at times, so we'll spend the next few minutes tackling some of the common questions and pitfalls we heard from customers and agencies like yourself. Before holiday events, it's important to evaluate if you want to adjust your strategy. First, review past performance, or if you're working with a newly created campaign, check similar campaigns in your account. Then manually adjust your targets by the same factor that your conversion rate is expected to change in advance of the event. For example, if you expect your conversion rates to double, double your CPA target or reduce your ROAS target by half in order to maintain a constant CPA or ROAS. Continue to monitor performance to ensure your holiday goals are met and you're maximizing profit for your business. So if you prefer to manually adjust your automated bidding for drastic holiday spikes in conversion rates, change your ROAS targets by the same rate that you expect your conversion rates to change. Or if you're using seasonality adjustments to automatically account for changes, select a specific time window to which adjustments will be applied. Then apply an adjustment based on the expected increase in conversion rate during the seasonal event. Remember that in both of these cases, you should only make adjustments for drastic changes in conversion rate. Adjustments to your TCPA or TROAS should be made when a campaign's conversion rate deviates from its usual average. When thinking about changing targets for seasonal events, remember to consider not just the beginning of the seasonal event, but also the end. Targets can be lowered immediately after an event ends to compensate for the drop in conversion rate, as ramping up or down largely works the same way. The algorithm will learn trends based on data going forward, though it will take at least a few days to adjust to new conversion behavior. The ramp down is usually much smaller since the conversion rate only changes for a short period of time. As a rough rule of thumb, a target adjustment of half the initial adjustment is the best practice. For example, if you increased your target by two, you should only decrease it from the baseline by 25%. Seasonality adjustments tell smart bidding when and how to adjust for your short sale. This should only be used by advanced advertisers in periods of short spikes, so something less than three days. If you have a promotion or sale, you might see drastic changes in conversion rates or values, and it may take up to one conversion cycle for smart bidding to adjust. Use seasonality adjustments only for short, infrequent events where you expect a temporary but significant change in conversion rates. You may be considering switching back to manual bidding during this holiday season, but this won't necessarily provide more control since changes in conversion rate and conversion delays will still be at play. Keep in mind that the CPA and ROAS targets is a control you can use like manual bids. Adjusting your targets will change the bid smart bidding uses in the auction. The main difference is that you can still take advantage of the discrimination that auction time bidding provides you across different queries instead of setting a flat bid. 
As demand changes during the holidays, adjust your targets as needed in order to manage your spending. Keep in mind that targets are the best lever to control costs. To increase bids and spending to capture more users, you can raise CPA or lower ROAS targets. This will result in a quick proportional bid increase. But remember, changing your targets won't trigger a learning status or reset anything your bid strategy has already learned about your account. For new flighted search campaigns, for example, a Black Friday campaign that would be live for less than a week, consider using a target-based strategy like Target CPA or Target ROAS to quickly ramp up. First, we recommend you set a high budget in line with expected demand. Then, set a CPA target that is higher than or a ROAS target lower than your typical attainment. For example, start with double your usual CPA or half your usual ROAS. As always, monitor your campaign and adjust your target as needed throughout the campaign flight. Now that we have a strong measurement and automation strategy, let's focus for a moment on creative. Here we have a breakdown of some of our top creative recommendations, starting with search. We recommend you ensure there is a responsive search ad or RSA with good or excellent ad strength in each group. You should have at least four extensions per ad, such as promotion or price extension. And last but not least, always use image extensions if available. For display, try to use high quality images without overlaid text or logos. Make your product or service stand out as the focal point of the image. Avoid creating collages and using digital composite backgrounds. And last, be sure to choose the automated call to action option. With video ads, we like to focus on the ABCDs of good creative. Your video should attract customers from the start. Your brand should be mentioned naturally and meaningfully. Viewers should connect with emotion and storytelling when possible. And finally, it's really important with video ads to direct the viewer to what they can do next. If you're looking for more creative best practices, check out the resources tab above. In addition to strong ad creative, it's important to make sure your website is ready for holiday traffic. Retail websites are a powerful window to a company. Both online and in-store performance can be improved if a company invests in their own website. Google is the perfect partner for that, as digital influences 77% of retail sales. The Grow My Store tool tests retail sites against 22 metrics, derived from several customers' experience with best practice research studies. It will provide you with recommendations for a faster site, mobile UX improvements, and tips for a simplified checkout experience. We recommend you evaluate your site as soon as possible, given the time it takes for some updates to be made. Now that we have our objective set and we have our measurement, smart bidding, and creative ready to go, it's time to supercharge our campaigns. Let's start at the bottom of the funnel with search. Google is where people search for what to do, where to go, and what to buy. Your digital ads can appear on Google at the very moment someone is looking for products or services like yours. And it's important to be present with Google search ads. First up, ask yourself, are you serving ads for all relevant keywords? We recommend using broad match keywords, which cover all exact and phrase queries with a value-based bidding strategy like TROAS or maximized conversion value. Dynamic search ads help you serve relevant ads for relevant queries. They have a unique value in driving incremental traffic for retailers with large, complex websites. In fact, 75% of queries reached through dynamic search campaigns are not covered by keywords. How crazy is that? We recommend running dynamic search ads alongside keywords and responsive search ads for optimal search performance. Next, you wanna ask, are you serving relevant ads? Responsive search ads automatically identify the best combination of headlines and descriptions to deliver the right ad to the right person. In summary, by combining broad match keywords with smart bidding and responsive search ads, you're positioning yourself for growth this holiday season.
We've seen this trifecta work well for some of our retail clients recently. In fact, advertisers that switch their phrase and BMM keywords to broad match in Target Rose campaigns can see 12% more conversion value. Also, we've seen that advertisers who add responsive search ads in their ad groups see up to 20% more clicks and conversions. Now let's move on to smart shopping, which is equally as important as search when it comes to capturing demand. Hundreds of millions of people around the globe do shopping related searches on Google each day. Show shoppers that you have exactly what they're looking for. People use Google to find the best products, prices, and places to buy what they need. Shopping ads are a visual ad format that highlights product details like image, price, and availability to potential customers who are searching for products. Shopping ads put your products in front of potential customers in a visual, immersive, engaging way that gives shoppers detailed information about what you're selling before they even click on your ad. With smart shopping campaigns, you'll also gain access to inventory across other Google surfaces, such as YouTube, Gmail, and Google Display. So you can meet customers where they feel comfortable shopping with the right format at the right time. Smart shopping campaigns work by using Google's ability to process lots of data. How do smart shopping campaigns achieve e-commerce growth? They use your business goals to automatically optimize campaigns. They're intelligently optimized using thousands of intent signals to reach your goals. And they're also optimizing your ads across Google channels, letting you reach the right user with the right ad at the right time. Smart shopping has consistently driven more value for advertisers than other shopping studies in a series of Google tests, including when compared to other automated bidding solutions. This is due to the way smart shopping campaigns work toward your goals. Smart shopping campaigns start by continuously analyzing Google insights on user queries, intent signals, as well as your insights, namely your audiences, brands, products, and basket size to determine patterns that correlate with online conversion value. And then at auction time, smart shopping campaigns use all these insights to decide whether the user is likely to provide high value and how much it should bid to maximize value. They also decide which product is the right product to show at a certain point in time and whether to show an ad in the first place. They do all of this in just tenths of a second so your team doesn't have to spend additional time on it. To prepare your smart shopping campaigns for the holidays, first determine whether your holiday goal is to maximize sales at a target return on ad spend or to maximize sales at a target budget. With smart shopping campaigns, not only can you retain your highest value customers by targeting them with remarketing lists, but you can also acquire new customers. You can reach potential customers and show them products from your feed, even if they have never been to your site. Up until now, smart shopping campaigns have been very effective in driving online conversion value, but have not included a way for advertisers to optimize for their other goals that are important to their business, such as new customer acquisition. With this new functionality, advertisers can now optimize their smart shopping campaigns to acquire more new customers in addition to driving online conversion value. When a customer makes a purchase, the customer value is combined with the purchase value to determine total conversion value. The bidding algorithm understands that new customers help drive overall value and factors that into bidding decisions. Smart bidding with the new customer goal maximizes the total conversion value, including new customer value. The new customer value tells smart bidding what sort of trade-offs you're willing to make. Your new customer value should be equivalent to the extra revenue you'd be willing to trade off for the acquisition of one new customer. If you're unsure what value to start with, we recommend using the default new customer value, which estimates future sales from a customer based on your average order value and purchase frequency. Keep in mind that you can have multiple campaigns, so if you have different goals and budgets for different product groups, it's recommended that you split them into different campaigns. However, you should only do so if the product groups have sufficient conversion data and your business goals require it. Now, when it comes to capturing demand, we recommend setting budgets at least 30%
over average daily spend in October. With Smart Shopping and T-ROAS campaigns, ROAS will decline as advertisers spend more and saturate their available audience. During the holidays, there are many more people shopping, which allows many advertisers to spend more, but increased competition can also make conversions more expensive. But as we know, it's also an opportune time to drive more overall conversion value. Here's a creative tip. The quality of your shopping campaign is only as good as the information you provide to your potential customers. Make sure all your inventory is added to the Google Merchant Center and that you fix any disapprovals. This will allow more products to be served. And of course, the performance of your smart shopping campaign is only as good as the data you input. So be sure to improve your shopping ads by adding higher quality data to your feed. We recommend that you visit and improve your titles, descriptions, and product images to reflect any seasonal products or offerings. For out-of-stock products, use the excluded destination attribute to temporarily opt items out of paid listings while retaining their performance history. To avoid item disapprovals for availability mismatch, enable automatic item updates and or use the shopping content API. Consider adding optional columns and extensions. Also be sure to add your current promotions to give customers a reason to buy now. Remember, you can simplify your smart shopping campaign onboarding with an e-commerce partner. This will help with setup, feed management, and campaign performance. Visit the resources tab above for more information on how to link smart shopping campaigns directly to your e-commerce platform. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now I'm going to hand it over to our amazing product lead, Ted, who's going to talk about generating demand. Hi, my name is Ted Gola. I am a product lead for display and video here at Google. I specialize in solutions for online retailers like you, and I am thrilled to bring you up to speed with our cutting edge solutions today. Now, I hope you are ready to take your marketing to the next level. We have already covered a lot of great recommendations for search and shopping, but let's take to the next step and discuss how to generate demand for your business. We'll first talk about discovery and how you can reach up to 3 billion people as they explore their interests and search for inspiration across their favorite feeds. Discovery ads can provide an open canvas for you to inspire and engage customers. Here, we are bundling access to those core experiences for discovery on Google, making it easier for brands to find customers where they are open to discovering new things in their favorite feeds. You can showcase your brand or products in a swipeable image carousel or a single image and include additional information to drive action. Discovery shows up for mobile users in Google Search App. It provides quick, snackable updates on the things you care about. So while my feed is chock full of great stories and content of my favorite topic, independent artists, my husband's feed is filled with environmental news headlines. On YouTube, users start on the home feed and scroll through engaging content they like. Here, in their Watch Next feeds, they'll see a customized experience so they can stay up to date on the influencers they love or find something new. These feeds drive 50% of all watch time on YouTube and are critical to content discovery. Finally, on Gmail, in the Promotions and Social tabs, you can engage with customers who have read through their primary emails and are open to a commercial message. So enabling multiple formats allows you more flexibility for reaching people as they want to be reached. We recommend you first start with a single image format that enables you to upload from 5 to 15 different images and rotate to customize the messaging depending on the customer's interests. And based on the report from those assets, you can then tailor a multi-image carousel based on your highest performing assets. 
To connect these customers and ramp up campaigns quickly, you can easily repurpose existing creative from other marketing campaigns like social. If these assets are performing well in other places, they may also work well with customers who are browsing feeds across YouTube, Gmail, and Discover. Your potential customers turn to YouTube to decide what to buy. Let's cover how video action campaigns can showcase your products and help close the sale. YouTube can drive results better than ever before with the right format for your performance goals. With video action campaigns, you can optimize beyond the click with a customized CPA format that will send engaged customers directly to your website where they can see your products and purchase. Video action campaigns are known to drive two times higher CTRs at a 40% lower CPA compared to our legacy formats. We have a brand new target row as beta that allows you to tap into value-based bidding by setting a target return on ad spend. If you like the sound of that, reach out to your Google team and learn more. Now, this year we have something even more special to present. Now you can enhance your video action campaigns by allowing customers to interact with product imagery and details from your Google Merchant Center while they watch your ad to drive more clicks and over 60% more conversions at a lower CPA. Can you imagine that? As a best practice, we recommend that you run your video action campaigns with product feeds alongside your smart shopping campaigns with new customer acquisition goal. Now let's take a look at how Dr. Squatch, a fast-growing personal care brand, successfully uses product feeds for video action campaigns to display their products in YouTube in-stream ads and make their shopping experience seamless for their customers. Dr. Squatch is one of the fastest growing personal care brands domestically with a mission to change the way consumers approach hygiene through natural, healthy products. Their marketing strategy has two key pillars, educate their customers on why natural products are the right choice and entertain them while doing it. To change hearts and minds at scale, Dr. Squatch began using YouTube to reach new audiences by deploying video action campaigns with extensive audience optimization and customer match. In addition to their targeted approach, their commitment to develop engaging creative has garnered over 500 million views on their YouTube channel. After seeing strong engagement and conversions on YouTube, Dr. Squatch expanded their full marketing funnel to include smart shopping campaigns. The brand was able to maximize efficiencies by targeting return on ad spend and their CPA, proving to be a great channel to maintain growth and scale and drive video viewers further down the purchase funnel. After seeing success with YouTube and shopping, during Father's Day, Dr. Squatch added product feeds to their video action campaigns. This allowed them to display their products alongside their video ads, resulting in a 20% decrease in CPA and a 13% increase in average order value, making the shopping experience even more seamless for their customers. This upcoming holiday season, the Dr. Squatch team plans to double down on what's worked for them. Listen, it's easy to give in the dark side scrub. Sharing their humorous and educational creative by targeting new audiences on the platform, all scaled by the power of YouTube and Google. How cool, right? It's so great to see Dr. Squatch benefiting from our cutting edge formats. Now, are you in need of video creative support? There are three options for creating your video ad. With Video Builder, you have the fastest and most cost-efficient way to create a video out of text and images. It's quick, free of cost, and simple. Look it up and try out. Another way is to take an existing video, for example, one that you have used as a TV commercial, and leverage our YouTube Creative Works to re-edit it to fit video action campaigns. A third route, which gives you the biggest creative freedom, but is also usually the most expensive option, is creating a new video from scratch with YouTube Creative Directory. Be sure to work with your Google team to learn about the best practices and solutions for your campaigns. We made it to our fourth and final step, evaluate and expand. I'm going to pass things over to Jeff to take us through the remainder of today's session. 
thanks all for the great questions and for being a part of Think Retail this year. Over to you, Jeff. Thanks so much, Ted. Let's kick off our fourth step. As time passes, you'll understand better how your ads are performing. Now it's time to discuss ways that you can use this information to really optimize your performance, test new strategies, and even find more opportunities for growth. When it comes to evaluating your campaigns, optimization score is a great way to estimate how well your Google ad accounts are set to perform. The, the score runs from 0% to 100%, with 100% meaning that your account is optimized to perform at its full potential. Optimization score provides relevant optimization recommendation and estimates the impact of implementing them on your account performance in real time. Note, your score will go up as you implement recommendations. Equally, your score can also go down if new recommendations appear in your account. Check out the Recommendations tab to see your optimization score and the recommended optimizations for your specific account. Optimization score provides a lot of really kind of helpful tips for your account, but we wanted to quickly highlight the most relevant recommendations for holiday readiness. First up, bids. Keep an eye out for suggestions to set or adjust a ROAS target. Second, budgets. We recommend that you keep ads running on your busiest days by increasing budgets and raising them in advance when you know of upcoming traffic spikes. Third, coverage. Look out for recommendations that ask you to apply dynamic search ads and use broad match keywords with smart bidding. Also, look out for suggestions to improve your RSA ad strength. Last but not least, shopping. See if your account surfaces recommendations that ask you to switch to smart shopping or fix disapproved products in existing campaigns. Looking for one step further? Consider enrolling in automatically applying recommendations. This new feature allows you to regularly implement best practices on your account, and it takes into consideration performance history, campaign setting, and trends across Google to ensure the most relevant recommendations. When considering expanding your campaigns, take a closer look at your ROAS goals. Adjusting budget and ROAS targets are the easiest way to help scale your campaigns efficiently. Setting a lower ROAS target also means your bids will be more aggressive in auctions, driving more sales. Setting a higher ROAS target means that the algorithm will bid more conservatively and likely win fewer auctions, those which are most likely to lead to a sale. This means better returns, but fewer overall conversions. We've covered how to evaluate campaigns, but we also wanna make sure you're making the most of this opportunity this holiday season. First, monitor your impression share and make budget adjustments accordingly throughout the holiday season. Also keep an eye on impression share, lost to lack of budget for both search and display to determine the percentage of time that your ads weren't shown due to insufficient budget. Secondly, understand demand for your products using the best sellers report in the Google Merchant Center and the Auction Insights report in Google Ads. We'll close out with a helpful recommendation when it comes to budget. Have at least 30% headroom in your search and shopping budget over your average daily spend in October. We've covered a lot today, so we appreciate you staying with us. Let's take a quick moment to recap all the helpful information. Here we have the takeaways using the Google Ads growth formula again as our framework. First, in the set objective section, we looked at the importance of setting measurable, time-bound, and customer-centric goals that are informed by trends. Two, in the get ready section, we talked about the big three, measurement, automation, and creative. Don't forget to use a value-based bidding strategy like maximum conversion value or target ROAS throughout the holiday season to maximize sales with auction time bidding and to deal with dynamic markets. In the third section, take action, we covered how to capture demand with search and shopping 
and generate demand with display and video. We learned the importance of advertising across platforms to meet holiday shoppers whenever they're open to discovery new products online. In the fourth section, we'd walked and talked through strategies for evaluating and expanding your campaigns. We discussed how to monitor budgets and performance and how tools like optimization score and auto applied recommendations can help with the process. With that, thank you for joining Think Retail. We hope you found today's content valuable. Good news is that if you did and are ready for even more, we've got it. Starting shortly on the Think Retail on-air landing page, you'll find our second best practices session, which focuses on growing in-store sales. It's in this session that AK and Carol will talk you through all the recommended local strategies so you can once again welcome holiday shoppers back into your stores this year. If you're looking for more advanced content, I highly recommend you check out the advanced strategies for growth as well. Those will be available on demand on the Think Retail homepage as well. On behalf of Vanessa, Ted, myself, and the entire Google Academy and Think Retail teams, we want to say a heartfelt thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules. Again, we strive to bring you a high level of value in these sessions, and we'd really appreciate your feedback on how we did. In fact, a lucky few winners will receive a Google Nest Hub for taking the time to fill out that feedback form so be sure to submit yours. Thank you again for taking the time to join us and have a wonderful and safe holiday season. And we'll see you next time.